Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on tetra meshing inside an electronic cabinet. This is part 2 of the video tutorial. So as you can see in this we have created parts and material points or bodies for all the different CAD parts that are present in our model. Capacitor 1, then this is capacitor 2, capacitor 3, we have fluid, then we have integrated circuit IC, IC1, IC2, IC3, we have inlet, we have outlet, three outlets are present, then we have partition, we have transformer part, then we have all the material points for all these different parts, that is bodies for all these different parts. So we have now split the entire CAD model into the parts that we want. We have created material points for that part and now we will proceed to mesh the model. The bodies or material points are named by whatever name we give for those material points. As you can see, names appear when we click on bodies. So within geometry, we have points, curves, surfaces and bodies. And within parts, we have different parts and the material points that we have created for all those parts. So as you can see one by one we are showing various parts that are present in our model. So now once we have created parts and material points or bodies, we will proceed to mesh setup. For individual parts, we can create unique or customized mesh by giving individual part mesh parameters. We will do that by using part mesh setup. In this, for each part, we can give prism layers, hexacore, maximum size of mesh, height, height ratio, number of layer of prisms, tetra size ratio, maximum deviation of the mesh, etc. All these individual mesh parameters can be given and a unique in and customized mesh for can be created for each part. So for capacitor 1 we will set this maximum size as 0.77 and minimum size limit let's say as 0.5. These parameters are given considering the size of the part that we are uh, considering the size and dimension of the parts so and which type of initial mesh growth and size that we want near that part. So for capacitor 3 we give it as 1.55 as maximum size and 0.5 as the minimum size limit. All the details of these parameters can be obtained from the ICM training lectures and they will define all these individual parameters for you. What these individual parameters mean and how to give them. For IC1 we give it as 0.5 the maximum size as well as the minimum size deviation uh, or minimum size limit. For IC2 also we will keep it as same and as well uh, as well as for IC3 and IC4. For inlet we will give it as 1.5 that is the maximum size of mesh for the inlet and the minimum size limit we will give it as 0.5. For outlet one we will give it as 1.4 and the minimum size limit we will give it as 0.5. Similarly for outlet two and outlet three. For partition 2 we give the maximum size as 0.95 and the minimum size limit as 0.5. For transformer we will give this input as let's say 1.47 and the maximum minimum size limit as 0. 0.5. So we have set up the individual part mesh parameters and we click on apply in order to apply these parameters to all the parts. So the part mesh 
for those individual parts will be created considering these part mesh parameters. Next we give the global mesh setup in which we give the scale factor as 1 and the maximum elements we will give it as 6 and we press apply after that we will go to compute mesh and we will create the surface mesh first first we will create surface mesh then volume mesh and then prism layers in that we select the all try option for mesh type and we will select patch independent for mesh method and we say compute so surface mesh computation has started here we can see the progress of the operation of surface mesh creation and this is how the surface mesh is created as you can see on the screen then we will check the surface mesh by using the check mesh operation and we will also check the quality of this mesh by using the quality matrix or quality option as you can see there are very less or no elements within the quality of 0.2 which is good all the elements are above 0.2 so our surface mesh has been created using the part mesh parameters so now that the surface mesh is created you can see within the mesh tab a new mesh tab has appeared within the model tree and within that a shell mesh has appeared which is the surface mesh after this we give the global mesh setup in order to create the volume mesh we select the mesh type as tetra meshing and the mesh method as quick delaunay and then we go to compute mesh click on the volume mesh icon our settings appear here and then we click on compute so the volume meshing has started you can see the progress in the bottom right corner in the progress bar and it shows that 100% volume meshing is done and our volume meshing operation is complete now so you can see that within the model tree within the mesh tab a new volume tab has also appeared which consists of the volume mesh so now we have the surface mesh and the volume mesh present in our model we click on various parts in order to make them visible after that we will see the surface mesh and the volume mesh displayed in the display window as you can see this is the volume mesh that is created inside the entire volume which consists of tetrahedral mesh elements after the volume mesh we need to check this volume mesh and also check the quality of that volume mesh so we go to edit mesh tab at the top and we click on check mesh icon we set default setting we check the mesh mesh check is going on and you can see its progress and it seems that the mesh was ok and there are no issues or warnings or errors in, within the mesh after mesh check is completed we go to checking quality of that mesh click on apply we see that most of the elements are above 0.2 quality which is fairly good quality for a tetrahedral mesh so once the volume mesh is done the third and final part is to create prism layers around the components where we have to capture the near wall flow we go to part mesh setup within mesh tab and we give prism layers for each component around which you have to capture the near wall flow we have to activate the prism option and then give the first cell height of the prism layer the height ratio and the number of layers number of prism layers that we want so for each component we give these we have already computed from our earlier calculations that the first cell height should be around 0.29 for the turbulent wall treatment or function that we are using so mostly for all components we are going to give the first cell height as 0.29 activate the prism layer and go on giving the first cell height and the height ratio for capacitor 3 also we give the height as 0.29 and the height ratio as 1.15 for all the ICs also we will do the same
for partition component also we will give the prism layer we will activate the prism layer we will give the first cell height as 0.29 and the height ratio is 1.15 even for the transfer one component we will give prism layer mostly around all the components we have to capture the flow near wall and so we will group prism layers near all the components solid components that are present for wall 2 also we will give the prism layer first cell height as 0.29 and the prism layer growth is 1.15 growth ratio in addition to the uh, first cell height and the growth ratio we also have to give the number of layers that is how many number of prism layers we want for such type of problems three are mostly sufficient as we will capture the flow near the wall so we give three as the number of prism layers that we want mostly three or three to five uh, three to five prism layers are sufficient for such type of problems there is turbulent flow around uh, solid walls so we will give the number of prism layers as three for all the components and you click on apply thank you for viewing this particular lecture see you in the next lecture